we continued the class discussing charity. We focused on that humble pushka, the charity box, and explained on three levels why that is actually a very special way to give charity. And understanding how charity makes us God's tabernacle, God's home. And understanding why we give charity so many times a day. What's the point of giving it so many times? When are those pivotal moments? And what's being accomplished by my charity all day long? So we are in the middle of a discussion on charity. At last week, we spoke about how special the commandment of charity is, how uniquely special, because it's the only commandment we said that actually involves your entire self. Because everything else you're doing with a part of yourself, with your mind or with your lips or with your heart, but you invest your whole self to earn a living. And then you take from that money that you earn the living and you give it to God. You do what God wants with it. It's not yours. We said when you give a percentage, if your percentage is 10%, which is the minimal God wants, but of course, if you can't do 10, whatever you do is very special. If your percentage is more than 10%, whatever it is, you need a total to create 10%. Doesn't make a difference what the numbers are. If you're earning $100 and you're giving 10, if you're earning $1,000 and giving 100, if you're earning 10,000 and, and, and giving 1,000, it doesn't make a difference. The point is it's a percentage. As long as it's a percentage, that percentage is impacted by the whole. So to create that whole money, I need my whole work. And to work, I need my whole self. We all know that. So this is the commandment that's giving my whole self to God. Because my whole self was invested in the work to create the whole money from which a percentage, whatever I decided that percentage I can do, is going to come. Absolutely. Okay. And I was going to speak about a pushka right now. Okay, so Manucha asked about a pushka. I have my pretty pushka there. Better than this pushka is the pushka I have in my kitchen. Because the pushka in my kitchen is built into the wall of my house. And that is the best pushka to have. So if you're looking to buy a pushka, you could buy one and build it into the wall of your house. If you want to spend a lot of money, there's a very gorgeous one someone showed me online. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, then you could just get a regular one <laughs> and put it into the wall of your house. You know, a lot of people think, like you know, said, does a pushka count? You put in a penny, you put in a dime, you put in a nickel, you put in a quarter. Not, not big bucks. It's not going to make a difference in someone else's life getting an extra nickel from you. A pushka is actually one of the best ways to give charity. Again, what I mean by a pushka in English, a charity box. It could look like this. It could be a paper cup that you just know is your charity box. You keep putting coins in it, and when it's full, you give it to a kosher charity. As we said last week, uh, a Jewish person who is poor, a Jewish organization, a synagogue, a school, a mikvah, writing a Torah scroll, a Chabad house, any legitimate kosher Jewish organization or Jewish person who is poor, that is charity. And an excellent way to do it is by putting every day a few coins or many coins or many dollar bills in a charity box. Why is a pushka a wonderful way to give charity? Because of three reasons. And these are very, very spiritual, very significant reasons. And it's so easy to do it. And if you have a number, if you don't live alone, you have other people in your house, what you could do, what I do every single night. So what I do is I make piles. For each person in my house, whoever's in my house, I make a pile of coins. And that way everyone is sort of reminded to give the charity. And then I can see very easily who, how many, at least, if somebody didn't give because I see there's extra piles. So why, why is it so special charity? One, because spiritually speaking, the more time something done is more powerful than the amount given. Maimonides said, how often you do something is more important than how much you do. So we could think, oh, I could write a check for $500. That's very nice. That is very nice. Whoever you're giving it to, the person or the organization will definitely appreciate the $500. Trust me, it'll be spent before they cash it. <laughs> Very good. But you did one thing. You wrote one check. Imagine if every day for a year, you gave $2. $2 a day. Actually, in the end, they didn't even get more than $500. But that's not my point. $2 a day. $2 a day. Hundreds of times you are giving charity. Those hundreds of times you are giving charity are more valuable than writing that one check. Now you could say, yeah, but I, even if I give $2 a day, I think this organization needs $500. They're not going to wait for the end of the year for me. Once a year, you can write your check for $500, but every day give a dollar. You give a nickel or give a dime or give a quarter. Doesn't make a difference the amount. It's the action every single day. 
We are told that a person is more influenced by the things he does than by the knowledge he has. So if every single day your hand extends in giving, your hand, now again, if we didn't have charity boxes, we'd have to find the poor person that you know is legitimate and you're not worried that he's gonna use the money for alcohol, you know, it'd be very complicated. But we have charity boxes, it's so simple. Again, go to the bank, get a roll of nickels, put a little, put it, buy your tin can. Every day you are training your hand to be a giver. You're training your hand to be generous. You're training your action to give. And that nickel a day, every single day, is more valuable than writing that check. And that's why this is an amazing way to give charity. There's a second reason why this is amazing. What's the second reason? Because we make the space holy. Bill Bavitra would speak about this a lot. Bill Bavitra would encourage people to have charity boxes at work. If they're going to the hospital, put it in the drawer. If you're going to a doctor's office, bring it with you. I have little, little, little cherry back boxes that I would go very often with my son, Joe Bear, especially when he was little and I was taking him to many, many, many doctors. Always would try to remember, always would bring a little charity box and a little coin because maybe that's why we're going to this doctor is to elevate the energy in that room by this action. Now, that's if you go on to the doctor, Hopefully it shouldn't be too long in the hospital, have it at work. Imagine your homes. And imagine, as I said, remember, you could take the charity box and nail it into the wall of your house. You don't have to be handy. They make them. You could buy them. You're buying them, ask for the ones with two screws because they make a lot with one. Those don't, those don't hold very well. The one I've had, which I've had since I've been married, that's been since 1988, still lasted me. Still lasted me. I had it in New York. We took it down, brought it to our apartment, took it down, brought it to our house. Things were made better than the now, <laughs> but it has two screws. But the walls of my house are godly. The walls of my house are mitzvah. And if you're not gonna do that, and you're not gonna knock something into the wall of your house, having it on your counter, having it on your table, it makes the air clean. Now again, that doesn't mean don't write that check. That doesn't mean if someone comes knocking to your door, don't give them money. But there's a very big advantage to the charity box, to the pushka, and again, every single time you give, changing the atmosphere, the air of your home. The Rebbe says it redefines the space. It's not just a home. Or if it's in your office, it's not just an office. The Rebbe said it's a center of kindness and caring. So when you have this charity box and you're giving in your home, your home is a center of kindness and caring. What do you do when you're traveling? So when I'm traveling, what I do is I take that, those little, I have very little ones. Okay. You've seen them, very, very little ones. I can show you how small they are. Very little. Showing you how, I mean, like just compare the two. It's very small. And when I travel, I take a bag of coins. What I've learned is when you're going through TSA security, mm -hmm. take the coins out of your pocketbook mm -hmm. and put them separately because otherwise they will stop your pocketbook yeah, exactly. because of the metal. So I've learned that over many, many, many times of being stopped. I can't count how many times I've been stopped. So maybe after a hundred times, I finally got smart. And now every time I go through TSA, I take out my bag of coins and I have it separate and, I, and they don't even stop me for it. So when I'm traveling, I have a bag of coins, I have this, and very often I fill it up. If, I, if I'm going somewhere for a week, I mean, I give a lot of coins every day. So then I just take it out and reuse it, take it out and reuse it, take it out and reuse it. And that's what I do. Making the space holy. Um, federal, federal question. Sure. What do you mean reuse it? What I mean by reusing it is I... Let's give... say you had $10 of coins, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so you put all your $10 of coins in a char uh, charity, charity box and it's, mm -hmm. uh, and it's full. Mm -hmm. So what do you do at that point? Empty it, mm -hmm. count it to make sure mm -hmm. it's still 10. Maybe it's more because someone else added some coins to my charity box. Maybe it's less because some of my coins went somewhere else. I write down on a piece of paper how much that was. Okay. Manufa says she puts the paper inside. What? I just write it down. I have a piece of paper. And whenever it's a certain amount, then I'll write a check to that whatever organization. If the charity box is like this, notice my very beautiful, dirty charity box, or like this, it's non-designated. It doesn't have any organization's name on it. So I can give this money to anyone I want that's a legitimate charity. If your charity box is designated, not that you care, just some organization sent you a nice charity box, so you're just putting it in. I've had this in this class 
at least three or four times where someone gives me a charity box full and I'm like, wait, you can't give this to me. It says another organization's name on it. Oh, I was just using it. No such thing. If it says another organization's name on it, every coin you put in there goes to that organization if you know them or not if you like them or not if you want to support them or not doesn't make a difference but if it's undesignated you can do whatever you want with it i do this all the time because i give a lot of coins every day so i have a tremendous bag of coins i generally use up often my whole bag of coins over the course of the day there are many times during the day i give charity and i give for a lot of different things every day so i have a lot of coins when i finish up my coins i empty it out i count it and i put the number on a piece of paper i mean i'm a very specific piece of paper not a random piece of paper and then i keep adding and adding and adding until it gets to a certain sum and then i write a check i, I give that to charity as we were discussing last week all the times we give charity when we put it in, when we add it to the paper, when we write the check, when we give it to the organization, the organization cashes the check, many, many steps along the way. But that's what I'm doing. I'm always recycling the money because otherwise I would just have this overflowing crazy amount of coins that wouldn't work. We elevated our action because every single day or multiple times a day we're doing this action. We elevated the space. My home has become a center. My work has become a center. My doctor's office has become a center of kindness and compassion. And... We're elevating time. Very important. Time needs to be elevated. Every action elevates the time it's done. So if I'm writing that one check, I'm elevating those 30 seconds, a minute, it takes me to write the check and put it in an envelope and a stamp. You know, it's all part of the commandment. It's all part of doing the good deed. But imagine if I'm giving charity every day. Imagine if I'm giving charity multiple times a day. All of those actions are elevating minutes and minutes and minutes of time. The Baal Shem Tov said, make sure not one day goes by that you didn't give. Do an act of giving. Every day has to have its own act of giving. So again, we spoke last week that when you give a percentage, let's say you're giving 10%. And let's say you earned a thousand dollars and let's say you gave a hundred dollars that's huge and we said last week and it's true and i'm not taking away anything we said last week all of the time needed to create that thousand dollars is elevated to god the whole thousand dollars in a sense is going to god because you need the thousand to create the ten percent to give the hundred and you're writing that check and it, it, this is money that could feed your life or could give you potential more life and you're giving it away all of that's true but we're saying here, we're looking at it from a very different way, but it's also very true. When I'm every day or multiple times a day giving my nickels and dimes and pennies and quarters and dollars, I am doing so many actions. I am elevating the space of my home or wherever else this charity box is. Also keep one in your car, keep it in your car, in your glove compartment. You wanna make your car safe, keep in your car mezuzah, double wrapped, and keeping your car a charity box. I have both in my car to be protection. Elevating action, elevating space, and elevating time. Minute. Um, when you buy books and pay for uh, education, for example, paying for Pegasian Jeep, like including tickets and everything, does it count toward? That's that's an interesting question. Books is one question, and education is another, and Pegasian is another. Those are three separate things. Okay, so Manucha asked, and somebody also was asking from the Zoom, but I'm going to ask, answer Manucha, and I'm whoever was the Zoom. So she said books. If you buy holy books, can you use charity money? You're allowed to if you write in the book that this is not yours. It's for anyone. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you could say, well, if it's for anyone, but if it's in my dining room and there's a lock on my house, it's not really for everyone. So I don't know if I would do it because how everyone is it if it's sitting in my bookshelf. But... If you're going to read the book and then you're going to, for example, give it to your synagogue or you're going to give it to a friend and say, read the book. And then when you're done, pass it on to someone else. You 100% are allowed to use charity money for that. That was holy books. Second, education. So education could have a few components. Education could mean you're paying for a JLI course. Mm -hmm. Education could mean you're paying for tuition to a Jewish school. So for tuition, uh, you, uh, you are not allowed to use charity money for your own children's tuition because you have an obligation to educate your children. So you cannot use charity money for your own children's tuition. But you could use charity money for someone else's child's tuition, but only for the boys because there's an obligation. You have an obligation to help the boys have the education. So don't worry, us women need a lot of education also. But I'm just saying from a technical perspective, if you are literally paying for a child's education, it cannot be your own child, and it would have to be a boy's. 
In terms of if you were taking a course, if you, if you were taking a, a course. So really you shouldn't use charity money for that because that's not really charity. It, but sometimes they might say to you, you know, well, the course costs a hundred dollars. But if instead of giving us a hundred dollars to pay for the course, you want to give us two hundred dollars as sort of a donation, which would be the cost of the course, plus the donation to the organization, then you could do something like that. But if it was literally just the cost of your course and the course was a hundred dollars, no, it's just like you have to pay for an escrow or you have to pay for food for Shabbos. So it would not, it would not be considered charity. Something else that's very special about charity is we're told that when we give charity, we make our space God's tabernacle. Just like in the desert, there was a tabernacle that was the traveling sanctuary. In the Hebrew, it's called the Mishkan. In the English, a word that you don't really use in English, anyway, it's called a tabernacle. It was the traveling temple. When we live a life for God, obviously there's moments of our day that we're serving God. There's moments that we're praying. There are moments that we're studying. There's moments that we're doing things for other people. And there's a lot of moments that we're living and we're cooking and we're eating and we're cleaning and we're talking. And all of those moments are my moments. And during my moments, it's my house. And maybe when I'm praying and studying, it's God's. When I am giving charity, and again, as we said, when I'm giving a percent, no. there's not my moments versus God's moments. It's all part of God's. Because again, just like with a charity, it's not only you, you work in computers. You're working 40 hours a week at computers. You're doing nails for 40 hours a week. You're putting on makeup for 40 hours a week. You're doing healthcare for 40 hours a week. You're not studying then, you're not praying then, you're, you're, you're working. Yeah, but all that is for God because all that work creates the money. Well, but I need the money for my rent and for my mortgage and for my vacation and for my car payments and for my insurance and for my healthcare. True. But you're taking a percentage and giving it to God. If you're taking a percentage and giving it to God, all that money is part of God. And all that work is part of God. And therefore, your life, not just those moments when you're on, when you're praying, when you're studying, but all your mundane moments, this is also God's tabernacle. So it's an amazing gift that charity gives us that all day long, we can be living in God's pattern. All day long, because all your day's work is creating the money from which is the percentage from which goes to God this whole day, this whole life. And imagine if you, in God's tabernacle, give charity frequently. So once you give charity, I said I give charity a lot of times a day. Once you give charity, in the morning, in the morning, first thing, if you say your blessings, right after your morning blessings, give charity. It's how you're starting your day. It's a foundation of kindness and thinking about other people. Additionally, before you pray, you pray the morning prayers. Before the morning prayers, give charity. You pray the afternoon prayers. Before the afternoon prayers, give charity. You say Psalms. You say Tehillim. Before Tehillim, give charity. You are doing a commandment, like you're making challah, you're separating the challah, like we did beautifully, I was remembering seven years ago in Manucha's house. Before you do that, give charity. Meaning, every time before you do something godly, you want to give charity. That's why I said, before you pray, morning and afternoon, I didn't say at night because at night we're not supposed to give charity, before your song, before your commandments. You're gonna light the Shabbos candles before the Shabbos candles. You're gonna light the candles for the holiday before the candles for the holiday. Anytime you do something that's serving God, you wanna start by giving charity. Like when we had our class in person, Joe Bear would go to every single person and he would make sure every single person gave charity. Why? Because we're told that charity opens up the gates of heaven and then whatever else you want is going to flow through those gates. I pray. Why am I praying? Well, I'm praying because God wants me to pray. And maybe I'm praying because I want some things from God. So I want the gates of heaven open. So my prayer should be heard. What opens the gates of heaven? The charity. I'm saying to Helen. Why am I saying to Helen? I say to Helen for each one of my children. I want a lot of things for them. I say for me, I say for my husband, I say for many people. Well, I want God to do something because of my Tehillim. So I want the gates of heaven open to hear my Tehillim. What's opening the gates of heaven? My charity. 
Can you ask every time you put charity? Can you ask for something? I do it every time. Every time. Every time. That's why I give all day. I give a lot of charity okay. and every because time. every coin is for a different reason. So this coin is for this, and 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 I have a whole litany of many, many, many things. And every time, basically, I give charity, I do it. So that's why I get a lot of coins <laughs> because I have a lot I want to give. Now let's. So I'm saying, every time you're doing the commandment to open up those gates, let's say something is happening in your life that's significant. You're about to have an important business meeting. You're about to make a phone call and it's a little intimidating. It's 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 a little important and the person's not so friendly. No. I give charity. Same reason. If charity opens the gates of heavens for my prayers or for my psalms or for my candle lighting or for my separating the challah, the charity is going to open the gates of heaven for this business meeting. The charity is going to open the gates of heaven for my discussion with the IRS. The charity is going to open the gates of heaven for when I have to speak to a healthcare issue. So before many things all day long, very, very, very worthwhile. Showing you how much God wants you to give charity. And I know I've, we've said this before over the years, but it's worth repeating. It is the only commandment that a Jew is allowed to test God. Non-Jews are allowed to test God. Jews are not. What do you mean a test? You could say, well, God, if you're really around, I'm going to do this and I want to see that you do this. I'm going to keep the Sabbath and I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And if you're around, you're going to do that. And if you don't do it, it means you're not around. That's called testing God. A Jew is never allowed to test God, except with charity. Because God so much wants us to give charity. And because God understands that it's difficult for us to give charity because we all need more money. <laughs> Giving away money when we need more money is a very challenging thing. So because it's so important, we are allowed to test God. What is the test? The test is that the charity creates the money. It's not like a, a, a blanket test. Well, God, I'm going to give charity. And then tomorrow I'm having a big party outdoors and it's not going to rain. And if it rains, forget it. You don't exist. Charity is meaningless. No, my charity is not determining if it's going to rain or be sunshine. The test of charity is money. What money is created? The money based on my percentage. If I'm giving 10% and I give $100, God's going to make sure I get 1,000. If I'm giving 20% and I give 100, God's going to make sure I get 500. That is the test. And God says, I will always come. Whatever charity you get, you will see that percentage is creating the whole. You can test me on this one because it's that important for me for you to give charity. And we're going to stop at this point because I'm going to run now and take my daughter to the airport. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the in person. Thank you for the people on Zoom. And God we're going to have many hot girls this year. This was mine. You're going to make yours. We're going to come and we will all be inspired and remember for the next seven years. Yeah.